Okay, so Wild Thornberries is another one of those shows that I was around for, but I never really got into. I was aware of what it was about, but I was never into it as much as some of the other Nicktoons. I didn't necessarily think it was bad, it just didn't resonate with me as much as, say, Spongebob or Jimmy Neutron, and I never really watched this movie that much growing up. In fact, I completely forgot what this movie was about. But, you know, go figure that it's the Wild Thornberries movie that ends up being one of the more fantastic Nickelodeon movies. Unlike the previous movie based on the Nicktoon, <coughs> Hey Arnold, this movie actually assumes you haven't seen the show and explains how everything works, making the movie easy to understand. And, oh boy, the first 15 minutes of this movie are super intense. And unlike the Hey Arnold movie, which didn't really feel that cinematic and felt more like an extended episode, this actually has a large enough scale and story with large enough stakes to justify a theatrical release. This movie is exciting and very intense. And it's actually kind of dark for something made by Nickelodeon. You have Rupert Everett as the voice of the villain, and he is so evil that he's even willing to murder a kid. Yeah, in a Nickelodeon movie, we have a villain who almost commits child murder. And of course, we have Tim Curry as the main character's father, and Tim Curry is always great. And the way they write their relationship is very well done. Sam and Garfunkel wrote a song for this movie, and it's actually on par with the I Want a Mom song from Rugrats in Paris. There's some emotion in this movie. Now, what does hold it back a bit is the second act is a bit unfocused, because the first act sets up this plot line about a cheetah cub being kidnapped by poachers, and you think that's what the plot of the movie is going to be. Eliza's going to go on this journey to rescue him, like in Take It or Finding Nemo, but most of the movie actually focuses on this plot line about an elephant migration, and the poachers setting up an electric fence so they can kill them, and... I don't know, there's a bit of a narrative flow issue with some of the plots and subplots they cram in, and the way they connect them feels a bit tacked on. And there is a big third act twist regarding the main character, which I don't feel bad about spoiling because this is a 20 year old movie. And, you know, she gives up her powers to. Sac she sacrifices her powers for her sister, and then she has to learn to communicate with the elephants in an ordinary way without talking to them with English. And then at the end, the shaman that gave her powers goes, Look at all the cool stuff you could do without your powers. You did this without your powers. And then gives her her powers back. So the lesson kind of feels lost. I would have preferred it had it ended with her accepting that, hey, I don't have my powers anymore, and that's okay. I can still do great things, even if I'm ordinary. So by giving it a kind of a deus ex machina, it did kind of not ruin the third act, but it just wasn't as, it didn't have as much weight as it could have. But overall, so far, this is one of the best Nickelodeon movies I've reviewed. Despite some of the problems, it's still exciting, heartfelt, and I went wild for it. So, Wild Thornberry's new for me gets an A-, a 9 out of 10, and a 4 out of 5 stars.